we got into working with master planning for churches as an outgrowth of master planning we used to do for healthcare facilities. They were facilities that were open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, always had to be operational, but they also needed to grow and change and adapt. To us, it's a chance that you talk to the church about their dreams, and then you have to balance that with the reality of building it in phases and, and building a facility that really supports their dreams and allows them to grow. The master plan was to build a building in three or four phases around one Main Street concept so that we could continue to develop the Main Street. Wayfinding would be very easy and it would house all the different components that they're going to build over time. The cost for master planning is always an issue for any church and uh, many times the staff may see the need but sometimes the people aren't on board with it, particularly when you're talking about the financial side of it. But it's worth every penny to know this is the general direction. Now again, things could change, God's plan could change, you know, some long-term direction of church could change, but that master plan really gives you clear direction. So we've been working with Gardendale for several years really to get this where the, the planning process and the budget process all matched. And we built the first phase and then four years later built the second phase. And it really was a very seamless and it's really worked very well. As we continue to grow, we were looking for ways to, to build additional space. Uh, we contacted over a period of about three years over 30 different adjoining property owners and no one was willing to sell. So then we started looking at the possibility of building a worship center on the existing property, but we had to replace the parking. We had no additional parking available and that's where we were blessed to find the property that we have eventually built on, originally intended for satellite parking. And so we really started helping them strategically think about their growth and the options and, and trying to keep things in balance. If you add 100 people to worship, you're adding 50 cars to the parking lot and you're maybe adding 150 children to the different areas and if they're not in balance, the growth doesn't work. Uh, if you, the parking doesn't support worship or the nurseries don't support worship, you just stop growing. And, you know. When we made the decision we wanted to build worship first and we built a worship center and said, look, we, rather than do a lot of things um, on an average basis, let's do a few things really well. For Gardendale, it really was the sense of an intimate worship space and the sense of that we're for the whole family, it's not just a certain segment. After four years of that, I think it was, we were able to build the children's building, but we knew that was next because of the master plan, and we, and we knew how it would lay on our lands. It was a, we just, once the financing was there and we were able to do it, then you know, it, was, it saved us a lot of time because we already had the master plan. It just shows us as we continue to grow and our finances are in the proper place, then we would move to the next phase and we know what that would be and, uh, and that would accommodate the growth. I, as a senior pastor, I'm excited that the master plan could be here long after I'm already gone, but the church will have clear direction. That's a great blessing because many churches just don't have a game plan. If you don't have a game plan, you know, it's hard to succeed without a game plan. Mm -hmm.